Hey friends, this is Dolany TV. Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the post-game edition from the New Jersey Devils game this evening where the Oilers win 6-3. And honestly, this is one of those games that makes you question this team because that's a 6-3 win. That's a convincing victory over top of a good New Jersey Devils team, right? They're 16-12-2 coming in. They've got the league's best power play tied with the Rangers. Oh man, life is good if you're the New Jersey Devils. You've got Luke Hughes stepping up. You've got Simone Nemich coming up the pipeline. Goaltending's kind of been shaky, but it's across the NHL this year. Injuries, stuff like that, whatever. Well, the Oilers chase a goalie within the first, whatever, five minutes of this hockey game. Proceed to fall down 3-2. You're sitting here like, oh, boys, not again. Like, do we even have an identity at this point? Like, we do everything we need to offensively to win hockey games, but you can't keep it together goaltending, defensive, or kind of 200-foot play-wise to win a hockey game. And then, yeah, like, as we've said so many times this season with this Oilers team, come out in that third period thundering. I mean, that is the offense we know and love when it comes to this team. And they turn back the clock substantially against the uh, the Devils. I don't even know who we're playing. But they're against the Devils in that third period. Just absolutely tilted. Whoop-bam! That way. And absolutely dummy them by the end of the hockey game. But it's one of those games where all through the first two periods, yeah, you did the right things to win. You probably could win this hockey game in the third uh, but even still, down 3-2 at the intermission, you're not expecting this team to have a good outcome based on how the overall season has gone this year. And somehow, some way, they come out and just absolutely look like world beaters in that third period, which is what they did on the eight-game win streak, and that's why we loved them on that eight-game win streak. So I've heard a lot about this in the comments section here. Being an Edmonton Oilers fan is the equivalent to being bipolar. Well, I'm sorry, not to make fun of or light of mental health issues. You know if you've watched the channel long enough how seriously I take that stuff. But this team this year, um, I guess the good comparison is Jekyll and Hyde, right? Is one or the other. And tonight, I mean, you get it bang, bang, bang like that through three periods of play. And you're just... <laughs> sitting here just mystified that this team can have an absolute microcosm of its season within 60 minutes of hockey against the Devils. It went from looking like the Oilers were going to absolutely beat the wheels off the Devils to all of a sudden, you know, uh, this is going to be a tight checking game to the Devils make it 3-2 and it's like, oh, we're overpass and we're not shooting, we're, we're down, we've given up three goals, what is going on? It's going to be another one of these nights. To all of a sudden, four goals in the third period, shut it down, lock it down. Kelvin Picard, solid enough to win. And obviously, you get another victory this season against the New Jersey Devils. So, hey, hey, what do you say? But, I mean, literally, right? The Jekyll and Hyde thing, bang, bang, bang. Just like that through three periods of play. And it's it's indicative of how the Oilers play hockey, I guess you could say, is it just leaves you with whiplash every single time a game ends, right? You get like tonight, you go in, uh, we're in tough, we're on a three-game losing streak, we gotta earn this one. You come home, win two, two goals right off the bat, and then you give up three in a row, then you go out there and score the next four, sure, but you go into a lot of games, especially over the past three, where it's like we got, we gotta, we gotta do this, this, and this. And by the end of the game, we've done exactly nothing except the opposite of that. And you're just boom, sitting there like, oh man, that hurt. I wonder how bad the next game's gonna hurt. And the Oilers come in tonight, and I mean, bang o to win, but <sighs> I don't know, man. It's it's been a ride this year with the Edmonton Oilers, and obviously. Uh, Thankful for the victory. I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm not, right? I'm not sitting here harping on the boys for a bad game by any means, but they don't they don't have to be so choppy in terms of emotion. I get it, it's the thrill of the game, but you'd you'd love to watch the Oilers like they did in that eight-game win streak outside of the Minnesota game. Just win every 
game convincingly the way you know they should be capable of. Right? This team, given the fact that they have McDavid, Drysaddle, they have good secondary top six forwards in terms of Kane, Nuge, and Hyman. And oh, by the way, you've got a point per game defenseman on your squad. You should, even with the lackluster defense, even with the lackluster goaltending at times, you should be able to dummy teams and dummy your way through the regular season like Boston does, like Vegas does, like LA is this year. Because what you have heard a lot about on Oilers pregame shows this year on 630 Chad, and I'm, it's nauseating because at some point you'd think Connor and Leon would figure it out. The thing is, those teams play to a system, they play to a structure, they play to a standard. And every night, you know they're going to meet those three things. And that's why they do what they do game in, game out. The Oilers, despite not having quite the well-roundedness of a roster, perhaps, as those other three teams, have the offensive talent to win games consistently by crooked numbers. Sure, it's a fault. It probably ain't the best strategy in the playoffs. But again, you should not have this October to January, I can't handle this kind of deal stuff because it should be game in, game out in the regular season, right? The Bruins, hey, you know what? They did fantastic last year and were bounced in the first round. Again, playoffs different animal. But you go in there and you look at how those teams play in Boston, Vegas, and LA, that is the regular season recipe for success. And the Oilers, albeit would have to tweak it to do what they need to do, you would figure that because of the pieces we have, if you played to a structure, you played to a standard, and you went out there and did your stuff game in, game out, you would win consistently. But this year, right, goals against are up, which is fine, but goals for are down. If the Oilers were averaging about four goals per game this season, and we were still giving up 3.25 to 3.5, we'd probably have an 18, 19, 20 game record as opposed to this mediocre 14 and 15. So that's that's kind of where I'm at right now after this one. This is just a another tax and one on the headspace. And friends, when I get wrapped up and I get angry about this team, well, it's for good reason because that's exactly everything I just laid out there. The three S's quite honestly, are what this team should be capable of, albeit, like I said, different from what those other three teams do. But the Oilers, given the offense they have, given the weapons they have, given the defense of scoring they get from Bouchard, it should be game in, game out, game in, game out, win three, lose one, win three, lose one, win three, or lose one, because you're playing to that standard every single night that's not there, and that's not even there throughout a full 60 minutes most nights, right? The Oilers can win 6-3, and they still didn't play to their standard throughout the entire game. That's what's mind-numbing, and like I said, the bipolar, if you want to use that extreme to measure it, or if you want to use the Jekyll and Hyde comparison, you literally saw it on display tonight. <laughs> Woo-hoo! Did you ever? And thankfully, for me... And all involved, the Oilers pull off a win, and they're one game back of getting back to 500. Let's go win against New York tomorrow, shall we? I'm Tyson. This is Stall on TV. Thanks for being aboard. I'm up on out here.